Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all keeping very, very well. Now, today we're gonna to talk about the uh, do's and don'ts of beauty when you're over 40. And I'm gonna give you five, hopefully, top tips that will help you with your routine. Now, if you like what you see in today's video, please do take the time to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell so that you get all notifications when I post. Okay, so let's dive straight in. The first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is skincare. Now, as you get older, your skin does go through a lot of changes. Hormonal things make your skin change. Uh, whatever you eat, your diet has a massive effect on how your skin changes. And sometimes these things are way beyond our control, but there are things that you can do to help your skin stay looking as best as it can. So my don't for skincare is don't buy cheap products, guys. It's just not worth it. You're gonna end up spending more money to make your skin look good and feel good when you should just be investing. So that's my do, do invest in very, very good skincare. Now, when I turned 40, I decided to do that. I decided to invest in good skincare and I went and had a chat with somebody who recommended the skincare company Ren to me and I have been addicted ever since. And two of my favorite Ren products that I'm gonna show you now are the Ren Centifolia Cleansing Gel, just here. It's absolutely lovely, it's rose-scented and it's really good if you find that as you get older, which I found, my skin started to get irritated by different things and this actually keeps it really, really calm. So. I I use this and I follow it up with the Ren Ready Steady, I <laughs> said that well, didn't I? The Ren Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic. And this is wonderful for keeping those pores tightened, for giving a smoother appearance. I absolutely live and die by this tonic. Um, it's a wonderful big size as well. I love the top of it. And what you do is put your cotton pad on top and pump it and it sort of shoots it up. But it's a really good product. I really recommend this skincare do invest in good skincare, guys. For moisturizers, I do also use REN. I've just happened to have run out. I use the REN uh, Evercalm range, which is wonderful for my skin. Like I say, as I've got older, it's got a bit flary uppy. It reacts to certain things it didn't used to react to. But I find the Evercalm range does just that. It literally does calm the skin. And uh, it's also a really good prep for makeup too. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about primers. Now, the one thing I would say about primer, the don't about primer, is don't buy a cheap primer, just don't do it. It's not worth it. You'll probably end up with tacky, sticky skin um, that really won't accept the makeup very well. So primer, if you want to use it and you don't have to, um, but if you find that you do need it, then do invest in a good one. Something, if you've got the budget for it, something like Hourglass Mineral Primer is a wonderful, a basic sort of smooth primer. And because it's a mineral primer, it's gonna be very, very fine. It'll accept the makeup really well. But if you're somebody that's got quite open pores, then obviously you want to keep those as closed as you can for makeup otherwise you're going to have very textured skin so something like the benefit professional is perfect for that this is the original they also now do a hydrating one as well it's like a kind of clay consistency but it really does close those pores up and give you a nice smooth base Okay, so next I'm going to talk to you about contour and concealer. So concealer first. Now, if you're one of these people who watches tons and tons of Instagram uh, tutorials and things, you see people basically putting under eye concealer all along here and all down here and uh, creating that triangle. And that's fine if you need that. But not everybody needs that. That's only really for people who have really dark circles underneath their eyes. The most really you should be putting on a concealer if you're just starting to get a little bit of dark eyes or you're starting to get that sort of transparency of skin underneath your eyes, you just need a couple of dots. Now there are some wonderful concealers out there and at the moment I'm uh, working on the Tarte. It's an absolute classic, the Shape Tape. I think every makeup artist has got this and pretty much most people I know own this actually. It's a really, really, if you can see it there, it's a really, really fantastic product. It is quite a thick concealer and it is perfect for underneath the eyes. So I do just tend to do sort of, I find I just need a little bit along here and that's fine. Now you'll also notice some people do tend to conceal the chin and put it down the center of the nose because they're trying to make their nose look a bit slimmer and in the middle of the uh, forehead there. Now again, that's not necessary for everybody. Everybody's face is different. Everybody's you know bone structure is different and you're only fine through experimenting what is right for you. Um, but I do recommend the Tarte. Um, I think it's very good for all ages, this one actually. But when you're older, if you do find you've got more wrinkles along here, 
don't, 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 don't bring the concealer out along here because all you're going to do is fill in those wrinkles and make them look more prominent. So don't, don't do that. Just underneath the eye here and with a nice sort of blending sponge, bring it all the way across very, very gently with your blending sponge and then it will just naturally go to where it wants to go. Now with contour, I do tend to use two types of contour. I tend to use a contour powder and also a contour stick. Now what you don't want to do with contour, especially when you're over 40, you don't want to go dark because that isn't what contour is. And that is what a lot of people make a mistake. They think contour is similar to bronzer and they kind of put it on thinking that they need to have the line there, they need to have it lifted. Well, yeah, you do lift it, but actually a contour stick or a contour powder should be a cool tone because what it's doing is following the, basically the natural cheekbone, if you like, I'm just talking about cheeks for a minute, natural cheekbone to lift it up. And if you use a dark one, all you're doing really is kind of mixing it up with bronzer and not getting the right effect and causing a heavy effect, which is probably going to make your face look quite saggy. But what you do is you want to lift the face with contour. So what I've got in my hand here that I'm flashing around is the Benefit Hoola uh, Quickie Contour Stick. And it's a really, really lovely contour. It's quite basic and it's I think it's £24, but I use it across my forehead here. I use it just a little bit under my cheeks, just here. And and I also tend to run it down the outside of my nose. I personally think I've got quite a wide nose. So I just like to bring it in slightly. And then I just go over it with actually, funny enough, a foundation brush just to kind of buff it into the skin just along here. And I follow the natural line of my cheekbone. But because this is a contour stick and it has a cool tone to it, it actually gives me the lift I want rather than it looking like I've slapped on loads of bronzer. Once your contour's on, you can then go on to do your highlight and then do your blush as well. And when you're doing your blush, guys, don't, don't, don't. I, it's a pet hate of mine, actually. Smile to show the apples of your cheeks. Because if you smile and show the apples of your cheeks and you pop on your blusher, as soon as you're in everyday life and you're walking around like this, your blusher has gone from there to there. <laughs> and it's actually just going to make your face sag. So just have your face normal and just pop it onto the apple of your cheeks you can see them clear enough without having to do that smile and then you'll get that lift that you want. Now I'm going to talk about powder next. As you get older, the necessity for powder isn't there anymore. Powder actually tends to make your face look quite cakey if you use the wrong one. Uh, if you don't sort of invest in a nice good one, a mineral one or one that's very sort of fine, it can make your face look very cakey because you're putting it on top of foundation. You're possibly putting it on top of contour as well. Um, so powder as you get older isn't really necessary. Again, as those lines start to appear, all it's going to do is basically make those stand out more than anything. So switch your powder, if you can, to a setting spray. Now, there are many, many good setting sprays out on the market. I love Anastasia Beverly Hills Dewy Set, um, and I'll put links to all these products that I'm mentioning below as well. But my absolute favourite is the Urban Decay All Nighter. Once this is on your face, your makeup is not moving. It's absolutely fantastic. So while we're just talking about powders, I just want to talk about another sort of Instagram trend, which is baking. Um, a lot of people, when they put their, oops, drop my concealer. A lot of people, when they put their concealer highlighter under their eyes, they tend to whack loads of powder on to bake it. Now, I've never quite understood this trend, if I'm honest with you, um, because all that is going to do is basically fill in any sort of lines that you've got um, and, and make you look a bit old, really, and a bit cakey. So if you can get away with it when you're younger, great, do it. I suspect, <laughs> I know I can't get away with it. As you get older, baking is a big, big no-no. It's not going to give you the look that you want. And actually, I don't know if I'm right in saying this, I think baking actually started with drag queens. Now, I love looking like a drag queen personally, but in everyday life, don't bake when you're over 40. As soon as your skin starts to change and those lines start to appear, which they do, if you laugh a lot like me, they appear, um, don't bake. Use a setting spray. It'll give you a much better finish. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today is lips. Now, as we get older, our lips uh, start to thin out, especially the top lip. I don't know why the top lip more than the bottom lip, but there you go. Um, more, the top lip does start to thin out. So what you want to avoid doing is making it look false. You don't want to overline your lips. And actually, to be honest with you, I more often than not don't use a lip liner at all. I have what's called a floating lip. That's basically, I don't use a lip liner. I just use my lipstick or my lip gloss. 
Now there are some lip glosses out there that you can actually use to slightly overline the lips, which give you a nice sort of plump look, but don't give you a false look. And a lipstick, sorry, a lip gloss that I really love for that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lip. This is Crush, which I use practically every day. I love it. And it gives me that kind of pouty look that I quite like without me having to pout basically. And because Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipstick is a little bit dry, I sometimes go over it with my NYX Creme Brulee as well, just to give it that gloss look and that's what you want as you get older you want a glossy look you don't particularly want a matte look unless you're blessed with beautiful massive lips and they don't get smaller you actually want to keep it light and you want to keep it glossy uh, you want to keep it looking plump and moisturized basically now, another brand that's really good for um, lips when you're older is Killer Queen. They have a range of nude lipsticks, which are fantastic. And I've got in my hand now the Sweet As Honey shade. I'm actually wearing it today, funnily enough. I've got it on now. But um, their nude lipsticks are wonderful. And I also really like the nude packaging as well, if you can see that. I just think it's very, very classic. I really like that. Yeah, so don't overline your lip, guys keep it light, keep it glossy and keep them looking moisturised. So that's my top five do's and don'ts, folks, just for now. I do have a million more of these, but uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, quite frankly. Now, if you do like what you've seen today, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do hit subscribe and hit that bell so you get all the notifications. As I've said, every product that I've mentioned, I will list below and put links to so that you can go and try them for yourselves. And please feel free to ask me any questions. We'll do some more of these little tips as well in the next video, because I think it's quite handy to have these recommendations. Take care and I'll see you soon.